In this video, we solve an initial value problem in which the forcing function, that is the function on the right-hand side of the differential equation after we have um, moved all of the terms involving the independent variable only to the right-hand side, um, in which the forcing function, that function, uh, involves direct delta. So we're going to use some of the results that we talked about in the last video for the Laplace transform of a function of t times a direct delta function. And then we will solve the differential equation and we'll see that the solution involves a heavy side function um, as, also, as was also discussed in the last video. So let's start the way we always start by introducing our notation. We let the Laplace transform of y of t equal y of s. And then we take the Laplace transform of the differential equation. Then we'll have the Laplace transform of y double prime plus nine times the Laplace transform of y equals the Laplace transform of t plus one times delta at t minus two. Well, since that's a second derivative, the Laplace transform has three terms. We've got an s squared term and then a negative s term and then um, a negative s to the zero term. And then the factors multiplying those powers of s are uh, y of s, and then little y at zero, and little y prime at zero. So that's this Laplace transform of y double prime. Then we have nine times the Laplace transform of y, which is nine times y of s by design. And then this requires a little bit of pattern matching. If this is f of t, and this is direct delta at t minus t naught, we see that t naught equals two. Now remember how direct delta works. It's a sifting function. So basically what it does is it takes this function f of t and evaluates it at t equals, or t naught equals two. So we're gonna have two plus one there. So we'll have a three times e to the negative s times t naught. So we're gonna have e to the negative s times two or an e to the negative two s. And then we will substitute in our initial conditions. Y of zero happens to be two and Y prime of zero happens to be nine. And then we want to get Y of S by itself. So what I would suggest is grouping the Y of S terms. I've got an S squared times Y of S and a nine times Y of S. So that's S squared plus nine times Y of S. And that's equal to three times this exponential um, plus 2s, because I'm going to add that to both sides, plus 9. And I want to get y of s by itself. So I will divide both sides by s squared plus 9. This isn't really bad at all. Um, we just had to apply that Laplace transform of this product here, which is pretty easy. That's f of t naught times e to the negative s times t naught. And then we solve for y of s. And then we write this, but for what we want to do is we want to write this in a form that makes it easy to compute the inverse transform. So we have y of s is equal to e to the negative 2s times 3 over s squared plus 9. And I see that s squared plus k squared in this denominator. So I know that k squared is 4, which means k equals positive 3. So this is actually k over s squared plus k squared. So we know the inverse transform of that is a sine function. So we can handle this. This is e to the negative as times f of s. Um, so we can do that um, using one of our uh, translation theorems. I believe that's the second translation theorem. And then uh, for this guy, I have an s over an s squared plus nine. That's going to lead to a cosine. So I would factor out the two there. So I'm splitting this into two fractions. 2s two over this k 
can be written as two times s over s squared plus nine so that I can compute the inverse transform of that. And this one is a nine over s squared plus nine. If again, k squared is nine, I need a three in the numerator. So I'm gonna factor out a three. So these two pieces are pretty simple, very straightforward. This is gonna be a two times cosine of three t, and then this is a three times sine of three t when we take the inverse transform. If I were to just take the inverse transform of this piece, I would get sine of three t as well. But since it's multiplied by e to the negative as, I've gotta use uh, this second translation theorem. Remember, if we have e to the negative as times f of s, the inverse transform is um, the inverse transform of f of s, which is f of t. And then we're gonna take the t and replace it by t minus a. Then we take that result and multiply by the heavy side function at t minus a. So that is by design, f of t minus a times h of t minus a. Again, that's our second translation theorem. So I'm using that pattern right here when I compute the inverse transform. So y of t is the inverse transform of e to the negative a s times three over s squared plus nine plus two times the inverse transform of this guy, which is cosine of three t plus three times the inverse transform of that guy, which is sine of three t. So we'd have cosine and sine of kt where k squared is equal to nine, which implies that k equals three for both of these. So I've got sine, cosine of k times t where k is three and sine of k times t where, where uh, k is three. Okay, so these two are taken care of and we're gonna use this to compute this. Well, one of the first things that we need to do is we need to identify a. So if this is e to the negative a s, just through pattern matching, the two and the a must be the same. So a must be two. And if this is f of s, um, we need to compute the inverse transform of that and replace the t with t minus a and multiply by the heavy side function at t minus a. And that's gonna to be t minus two in this case. Well, the inverse transform of this is a sine of three t, but then we're going to replace the t with t minus two. And then we'll multiply that by the heavy side function at t minus two and add two times cosine of three t and three times sine of three t to that. Okay, so that is my solution to this differential equation um, subject to these initial conditions. We had a direct delta on the right-hand side. So we have a heavy side function at t minus two um, in our solution, which is what I would expect. Um, because if I take derivatives of something involving a heavy side function, I expect delta functions actually. Um, now I'd like to write this as a piecewise function. So um, since I have a heavy side function at t minus two, I'm going to separate the um, domain of zero to infinity to the intervals from zero to two and the interval from two to infinity. So let's do that. On the interval from zero to two, the heavy side function, remember, is zero. And then at two, it's gonna jump up to one. That's the heavy side function at t minus two. So we'll have zero times that function on the interval from zero to two. We have it this times zero, which is zero, plus this, plus this. So I've got two cosine of three t plus three sine of three t on the interval from zero to two. And the way I tend to think of it is, well, the function is just sort of going along 
it's minding its own business. And this is the function that we would get if we were solving this differential equation and this right-hand side was zero and we were on the interval, um, well, just from zero to two initially, we just have a right-hand side of zero. If y of zero equals two and y prime of zero equals nine, um, we would start like this. And then at two, the system was dealt a sharp blow. <laughs> Something happened and at t equals two, everything got changed a little bit um, because then we're going to suddenly take this function and then we're gonna add um, this new function. When t equals two, the heavy side function is one. So we'll have this function plus this function plus sine of three times the quantity t minus two. So that's what happens after that sharp blow is dealt at t equals two. Now remember this, this differential equation um, is going to be equal to zero. Um, the right-hand side of the differential equation is equal to zero until we get to two and it's equal to zero after two. There's only one moment when it's not zero and that is at t equals two. And at t equals two, uh, this happens. And because that happens, the solution changes, everything gets shifted a little bit. And that's where this uh, sine of three times t minus two comes from. Okay, so that's the solution to that differential equation. And we'll do one more example like this in the next video.